Alexander Neymark is the first speaker who's speaking about foreign coins of the first to fourth centuries found in Sogdiana. This very simple map actually shows Sogdiana, um, which itself is um, really uh, wellies and oasis is based on two rivers, that is Zarafshan, uh, upper part is Samarkand, lower part is Bukhara, and then Kashkadaria, upper part is Kesh, and lower part with uh, this desert delta is Nakhshab. And uh, during the last maybe 20 years, it became clear that coin production of Sogdiana in the first century was much more diversified uh, than we thought. And uh, um, uh, here you can see production of nine separate mints, which were acting in Sogdiana in the first century and a domini. Um, so uh, Sogdiana had its own coins, its own tradition by that time uh, uh, with um, nine different, well, actually simultaneously eight different principalities minting coins. Nevertheless, there were uh, coins coming from outside and uh, the first uh, I would like to talk about are three uh, finds of Parthian, Parthian copper. Uh, well, uh, they're not spectacular, nothing like we saw before. Uh, in fact, they are all rather worn uh, and poorly produced uh, Margiana issues. Um, well, this one of the first century BC, uh, uh, most likely, and um, uh, two others are really um, uh, coins of Sanabar, but these are the only three coins so far, uh, three Parthian coins so far recorded on the territory of Sogdiana. This is kind of surprising because um, Parthian territories were actually uh, lying immediately to the south of Sogdiana. Well, uh, you had to, for example, from Bukhara, from this area, you had to go only um, 90 uh, kilometers, well, 75 to 90, depending on what which route you are taking, uh, to uh, the bank of Amudari, and then to, to Marhala, to the uh, travel to Merv. Uh, and Merv was uh, at least sometimes Parthian. And then, in fact, uh, a little bit further to the east was Nisaya, and Nisaya was always Parthian. And nevertheless, uh, Sogdiana does not have Parthian coins. Uh, in other words, uh, this result is somewhat negative. Uh, we have a lot of Kushan coins. Uh, we have a significant number of Kushan and Sassanian coins, as we'll see further. But Parthian coins, for some reason, did not come to Sogdiana. Uh, in other words, the uh, tales about um, uh, some kind of um, intensive large uh, trade route, which was coming through Iran, through Parthia, uh, and further to the north uh, into Sogdiana, well, so far is not being corroborated by the numismatic evidence. Uh, we do have uh, some uh, separate finds of Parthian coins a little bit further to the north, to Infergana, one on Lissipul, uh, one in Kazakhstan. Uh, but uh, once more, these are scattered things from 400 uh, years of uh, um, coexistence, uh, and we have literally very few of them. Well, a uh, uh, um, little bit more um, can be said about uh, Kushan coins. Uh, last year, I published, uh, actually, in fact, we published an article together with Anvara Tahajayev uh, on the coins. Uh, uh, on Kushan coins found in Sogdiana uh, for the first time uh, summarizing all that was available. Uh, before us, we actually found 17 coins in, mentioned in literature. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, through collections and through archives, which I accumulated and what I accumulated, and through private collections uh, and so on, we managed to uh, establish, uh, in fact, uh, um, the play, uh, place of finds for 47 coins, uh, Kushan coins. Uh, well, uh, the, the general consensus uh, is that, uh, that of course, 
uh, does not show that Sogdiana was ever a part of Kushan Empire. In fact, we know perfectly that there were separate Sogdian coinages in each of Sogdian principalities, and the border was uh, going in by soon. Here it's marked where the big difference uh, in uh, uh, Kushan coinage um, um, is um, 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 well, well, where the border is uh, of uh, distribution of Kushan coinage. What uh, do these coins do uh, in um, uh, Sogdiana is not quite clear. We can say that um, um, I can mark two things. 25% as usually in a sample of foreign coins, copper foreign coins on any territory um, are uh, pierced and we use probably as jewelry. Um, uh, and then uh, we have an interesting case when uh, a, um, about half of all Kushan coins found in um, uh, Penjikent uh, in a Sogdian city, best explored, were found in the temple. In fact, they were found in um, um, the place which was used to throw away uh, old temple offerings. And uh, what is interesting is that um, uh, coins are all, of course, of the second uh, and early third century, while they all are found in the strata of uh, the late seventh, early eighth century. So for several hundred years, they were in fact um, lying uh, somewhere uh, in the um, um, well, depository, I would say, um, some kind of um, um, uh, place where various kinds of offerings were held. Uh, well, what's about the rest? Uh, there could be some souvenir functions, and so I don't know uh, what to say. But what is important uh, is that um, th these are not all coins uh, the, that we uh, published. Um, uh, these are those which were able to illustrate 17, as I said, were uh, um, uh, recorded before us, and uh, uh, we were not able to illustrate them. What is uh, uh, important is that um, uh, um, there's a pattern in distribution of these coins, chronological pattern. Uh, we have um, uh, a few coins of uh, Kujla Kafizis, and then we have um, Great Surge up under Sotramegas. Well, uh, at the time of Sotram, well, because Joe Cribb is now dividing him into uh, actually two, um, uh, between kind of dividing uh, this coinage between two rulers. Uh, and then uh, we have significant Kanishka. We have the worst drop at Huvishka uh, uh, time and uh, slightly recovery later, possibly because Vasudeva coins, in fact, are coming uh, to Sogdiana even later. Uh, uh, so uh, that's an interesting question, what's happened? Uh, but I would like to remind uh, uh, everybody that there is uh, not only uh, uh, coinage uh, testifying to some kinds of events happening, but also archaeological materials. We know that uh, about the middle of the reign of Kanishka, uh, a wall was built in Derbent Passage uh, in between Sogdiana and um, uh, Bactria. Kushans built this wall to block uh, anything that is coming from Sogdiana. And in fact, we uh, see, um, um, we, we have some evidence that uh, there was a possible uh, short-term invasion of Kushan territory. In Sogdiana, the problem was really serious. Uh, so uh, this is the list of uh, coins I don't want to uh, stop on it right now. Because uh, what's happened with um, uh, um, Sogdian sites, uh, uh, was much more serious than anything that happened in, in, uh, in Bakhtia at the time. Uh, that is Afrasiab, the site of ancient Samarkand. It has multiple walls. So this is the first fortification system. That is the second wall. That is the third wall in front of it. And then that is external wall. So traditionally, um, until 1960s, scholars thought that that was a development which was linear. In other words, uh, that was the beginning, and then it was adding um, 
and, and expanding territory of the city. In fact, it wasn't the case. Uh, in fact, the earliest walls turned out to be the external, huge, about 220 hectares, that's about twice the size of Paris, Paris and two and a half times the size of Paris in the 15th century, for example. And then uh, 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 it contracted to just administrative unit here, and then started expanding once more. Um, this is fourth century, uh, this is fifth, uh, early sixth century, and that is returning to the original contour uh, by the seventh. So what's happened uh, in the second century in the Domini, I'm not sure. Uh, well, end of the first, second century, we're, we're not, we cannot date it so, pre so precisely. But I um, uh, think that it might be connected to this um, interruption of flow of Kushan coins and fortification of the border by Kushans, uh, as the Kushans were threatened by something that was happening in the north. And it's not just Samarkand. In fact, every significant Sogdian city that we know, early significant Sogdian city, has the same story. Uh, that is once more for ICF just to show details with this walls, which you can read really on air of, air of photo. Uh, and uh, uh, this is another site which I excavated in uh, late, in the second half of 1980s. It's called Durmantepa. And uh, here is a large external um, contour, which actually, um, the, this is the wall of the um, uh, Hellenistic period, which was abandoned in the uh, second century in the Domini. And that is uh, a fourth century city which was built inside of this contour. I call them palimpsest cities. Uh, that is another one explored by Pugachenko and Dertviladze that is called Kurgante uh, Parlat. Uh, and uh, they didn't realize what is happening, in fact, but uh, by uh, um, um, uh, working with their materials, it's absolutely clear that this wall is uh, Hellenistic, and that is square early medieval city that is built into it in the uh, early fifth century. Uh, so there was something that can be called Sogdian catastrophe, and the coins are actually marking this, or at least I would like to think so so far. Uh, that is, in fact, uh, an attempt to show um, a, um, a chart of the development of Sogdian cities uh, with uh, um, ancient cities suddenly uh, interrupted in their development. Uh, there's a really problem in the second century in the Domini. And then uh, both these ancient cities uh, resurrect, first uh, as, as small ones and then expanding, and then new ones uh, uh, like this uh, appear. Uh, and uh, uh, that is basically all the Sogdian cities that we know no territorial development. What is interesting that um, as soon as Kushan Empire is gone, and as soon as uh, we see uh, Kushan Sasanian monetary circulation appearing in uh, Bactria, or well, Tokharistan by that time, uh, uh, the same thing happens uh, in parts of Sogdiana. And uh, um, this is uh, a map of uh, Kushan Sasanian borders in Central Asia based on coin finds. Uh, so this is the area which is, well, that is uh, still North Bactria. This is by soon the border. Uh, and out of Sogdian principalities, uh, Bukhara has massive archeological strata uh, with uh, Kushan Sasanian, uh, post Kushan, uh, meaning imitations of Kushan coins, um, all types, all, all principal types from Huvishka um, to Kanishka the second and uh, well, of course, six different stages of Vasudeva imitations uh, and uh, some Sasanian coins, mostly of Merv mint. Uh, some of them uh, actually um, um, coming um, from further means, uh, but mostly of Merv mint. Uh, so, uh, in other words, it looks like that with um, the great geopolitical changes of the third century, part of Sogdiana became um, a province 
uh, of Sasanian Empire, well, I would say uh, part of the Kushana Sasanian realm. Uh, the number of coins found by now in Bukhara uh, is uh, um, significantly of this complex, uh, significantly over 100, well, I would say coming close to 150 uh, recorded ones. Uh, many of them, most of them are in archaeological strata. And what is interesting, there are no other coins, no other Sogdian coins in this strata. So we're talking about occupation of this area. It lasted for about 100 years. It was probably, uh, it had probably ended with Kidarite invasion. Uh, well, uh, this is corroborated by uh, the uh, um, great um, Shapur the first inscription on Kabe Zardosht. Uh, because it says that the borders of, uh, of Sasanian um, Empire actually uh, um, um, come to uh, Peshawar, but then in the northeast, uh, uh, it is Kesh Sogdan Chach. So if you exclude Bukhara from Central Asia, that is exactly Chach in the north, Sogd uh, in the east, and uh, Kesh in southeast. Uh, and uh, the last, uh, and maybe by not, but not uh, uh, least, uh, are um, um, the Roman coins. Um, we uh, see significant uh, amount of Roman copper in Merv uh, in uh, the third and fourth century, mostly fourth actually, but also some third century coins. Uh, and uh, that was, uh, uh, when I'm saying significant, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, it's hard to say what is the percentage because full catalog of uh, finds of uh, Sasanian copper in Merv and particularly Sasanian copper of the third, fourth century have not been published. <clears throat> there was a significant original Itake collection was published by Nikitin and Loginov. Their statistics could be done. But uh, principally, we have at least 22 late Roman coppers in Merv. Uh, to approximately 400 of local coins covering the same period. It's, um, it's, it's a lot. Five uh, percent, given the distances, is unbelievable. Uh, but uh, what is uh, even more strange is what uh, started being clear over the last years uh, in the north to the north of this. Uh, this is uh, actually already not the full list of uh, 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 the uh, Roman late Roman copper uh, found on the. Great Khurasan tract, which starts from Merv. Uh, uh, well, these coins are all found to the north of Mudari already in Sogdiana and further. And going, uh, well, along what is commonly called Silk Route, uh, or which is actually a major international road uh, through Sogd, Chach, uh, then uh, uh, Talas Valley, uh, Chu Valley, uh, along the Isakul. Uh, and uh, then into to Turfan. Uh, altogether, there are 15 coins found on this route. Uh, as I said, this are not all uh, in this plate. The plate is uh, 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 done uh, some time ago. Uh, and uh, uh, these are coins, well, um, some of them I cannot illustrate at all because these are all finds. Uh, coins uh, uh, are ranging from um, uh, the late third century. Uh, uh, there's a surge around Tetarchy and uh, Licinius. Uh, and then another surge, uh, some Constantine bronzes, and then another surge uh, uh, at the end of the fourth century. Uh, so uh, this is, these are the most home, uh, recent finds, which I published, uh, which we Anwarat Hadjaev published in a separate article. Uh, uh, I'm always trying to, yeah, for some reason, to ascribe everything to myself. I'm very sorry for this. Uh, but um, uh, uh, one of them is early. It's Antiochia, uh, 
semi-independent coin, which doesn't matter for us now, but uh, these are new uh, finds of Roman coins in Uzbekistan. Uh, two of them uh, are from Sarakultepe, and uh, in fact, two are from Minktepe. This is uh, 35 kilometers southeast of Samarkand, and that is uh, 20 kilometers north of Samarkand. Uh, so uh, the result looks like this. That is the road, and it's marked by coins. In fact, there's one more coin here, which is not published. Uh, one more coin from this area uh, is actually a, uh, uh, just showed up. It's uh, copper plated with gold. So apparently this was a uh, souvenir. Well, there's kind of jewelry function there. And definitely some other coins are um, uh, pierced. So that's the same story. And then it goes here to Kyrgyzstan and then goes on two sides of Issakul, that is Almaty, and that is uh, Bishkek area. Uh, uh, sorry, this is Ton, um, uh, that is Bishkek, that is Ton, and then further to Turfa. Uh, so uh, what is interesting that this coin sides with the flow of Kushana Sasanian coins, which starts at that time, and the first Sasanian coins appear in uh, um, Turfan area, uh, uh, well, the deposit can be dated around 325. So that quite well coincides with this Roman flow. And as I said, we have um, um, along the same route, finds of Kushana Sasanian uh, and post Kushan coins, copper uh, uh, also. So uh, uh, that is what I wanted to say, really. Uh, it's not, uh, I hope, that much. Uh, uh, what I wanted also to point out that uh, since we uh, um, are talking about uh, um, uh, collecting coins, of course, uh, um, if we know the provenance information, the provenance information in some form has been preserved, we can come up with absolutely different results. So whenever uh, you, ladies and gentlemen, encounter even hearsay provenance information, um, try to record it, save it, or remember it, because that makes a big difference. Because 47 Kushan coins of poor quality is nothing. 47 Kushan coins with recorded places of find can change Soviet history. Thank you very much. I hope I did not annoy you beyond the measure. Thank you, Sasha.